feet. And Cheryl, they have moved the uh, uh, unemployment assistance to the courthouse for the rest of the week. They're expecting a flood of people. They just need more room. So they'll be at the courthouse until further notice taking those applications. It is quite impressive, though, how they managed to get right to work and start to rebuild. That's the case. Okay, thank you, Jim. Of course, the stories here, many sad ones, but again, the true spirit, the generosity of the people in the area pitching in, rolling up their sleeves, trying to help their neighbors and their co-workers. That, at least, is the inspiring word from Litchfield and Grayson County tonight. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, thanks. Cheryl Cage live tonight down in Litchfield. And we want to check in right now with uh, John Belsby to see what's next from Mother Nature. John? Jackie, uh, still a slight chance of a thunderstorm this evening. Take a look at the radar, though. The good news is the lack of storms. There's one thunderstorm west of Bowling Green. There's a severe thunderstorm warning for Logan County there. We have a small chance for mid-evening. Uh, any storm that does develop could be heavy, but again, it's going to be very isolated. Of course, Scott, you mentioned 175 mile an hour winds with the Litchfield tornado. Campbellsville also a uh, considerable amount of wind damage uh, with 70 mile per hour straight line winds and an F zero tornado at Burdick down in Taylor County, uh, winds of about 70 miles per hour. But at least for now, all is quiet. We hope it stays that way this evening. We sure do. Thanks very much, John. Emergency leaders say the Grayson County Twister damaged around 100 homes today. Many returned to see their neighborhood was lost, or at least a lot of it. Among them, Tony Grubbs, his home destroyed. His family came through last night trying to salvage anything of sentimental value. And this afternoon, he went back to search once again. I just had to come back and see it. I, had, I didn't get to see it last night. So just what I could see by a lot of flashlights, you know. You just really can't comprehend, but you see for yourself what, what it's like. Damage estimates in the millions. Red Cross shelters are open again tonight for those with no place to go. And to see the overall path this storm took and how random the destruction was, we went up in Air 3. Chris Parente has had a bird's eye view all day. He joins us now live. Chris? Jackie, random is the right word. It appears that the funnel cloud would touch down, uh, then lift, touch down again about 100 or 200 yards later. So you've got some massive damage. What you're looking at now are live pictures of the industrial park. But then only about 50 yards away, you'll have homes that aren't even touched. Then further on, more homes that are completely destroyed. Uh, as you know, the total path of this tornado, about four miles, started to the north of town, traveled to the southeast. Uh, again, we're told about 80 homes in the county suffered some kind of damage. Uh, just quickly, I talked to the American Red Cross. They've got a team of more than 20 here, many of them from Louisville. Uh, they are assisting the folks, uh, trying to find them shelter, uh, food, and clothing especially those who, who are without a home, but we're told really the good nature of the people here is helping out because a lot of those who are without a home are staying with friends and relatives. So uh, pretty much everybody pitching in to help out, uh, but all along... Okay, this is exclusive home video. Of the here we go. ...shot by a truck driver who just happened to be in the area yesterday when it struck. You can there see the is. tornado split apart, forming two funnel clouds that then came back together. The impact of the twister had already toppled tractor trailers in its path when this was taken. That tornado ripped through the lives of hundreds of people in Grayson County. More than a dozen businesses are destroyed. Scores of homes damaged and cleanup is not going smoothly for everyone. Our Lauren Smith joins us live now from Litchfield with the latest on that and something else that happened today. Lawrence? Well, Melissa, we've been getting just what we don't need here in Grayson County. More rain. It stopped for now. It was raining pretty hard a little while ago. Behind me, you see the remains of a business. This used to be a two-story building. You can also see a backhoe here. It's silent right now as the folks who rebuild this business, who used to own this business, rest and relax, as many are here in Litchfield. It's been a long day, the first of many long days to come here in Litchfield, and then it was capped off by a fire. Sirens sounded again in Litchfield tonight. This time, it was not a natural disaster, but a man-made problem. A fire broke out in the debris of the Bailey Lumber Company, apparently sparked by the very equipment being used to clear the rubble. It didn't have started, we don't know, but it's pretty good smoke, then it started uh, flaming, and uh, so we had to get the fire department back out here. Shut up, Gary Lawson. Today. Oh, they're small, you know, they were well-contained, but I guess just moving the debris. No one was hurt. But it was just one more misery for a town that's seen more than a chair. Not far away, the Burkhead family was trying to pick up the pieces of its diesel repair shop. It's almost devastating as to where, where to begin. The Burkheads had left just moments before the twister hit. 
Now they're trying to salvage enough to start over. There's tools that we need to start over that you can't start over without that has to be found in all this rubble. We just pick up and go from there. Meantime, police and the National Guard are keeping up their high profile, making sure thieves do not try to take advantage of the chaos. It's mainly just making sure that the right people are going in the neighborhoods it should be. Um, and if there's a problem, that's all deferred to the local law enforcement. But with the help of the, 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 all the agencies pulling together, um, we found that uh, a lot of patrolling in the areas, we've not at this time had any problem with anybody trying to, to get off with anyone's personal property. And that is good news here. Now, authorities thought they had found all the damaged homes here in Grayson County, but tonight the county judge told me they found five more in the rural eastern part of the county, so there is much work to be done here, and it begins once again at daybreak tomorrow. Live in Litchfield, Lawrence Smith, WHAS 11 News, 19. Well, weather-wise, this has been a delightful evening in Louisville, but there's still threatening weather at the scene of yesterday's tornado. A tornado watch tonight in Grayson County. And Ken Schultz joins us now with a look at the power of yesterday's storm. Ken? Talk about that watch, too. Uh, basically, that watch has been in effect the last several hours, but no severe weather threatening Grayson County this evening. 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon, though, that was a different story. That's when a tornado touched down to the north of Litchfield and traveled in an southeasterly direction about 45 miles per hour. National Weather Service went out and investigated the damage, considered that tornado an F3, which means that it had winds of 175 miles per hour. And the basis of that was the fact that homes, although virtually destroyed, still had parts of their structure remaining above the main floor, like a second floor wall or room or something like that. Returns the Red Sox battle the Yankees in the greatest rivalry in sports. Black Saturday baseball returns May 27th. It's the mother of all fuck Sundays. Uh, and mom's under the weather. It's like some sort of horrible science experiment here. Will the boy's biggest stunt ever... I can't make it look like you're doing that. Huh? ...make her feel better? Uh, maybe not. Welcome, all-new 8.30 Fox Sunday. How often did we make for a change in history? The assignment was the assassination of an American citizen aged 46. President Kennedy is dead. For decades, they controlled the truth as we knew it. The Roswell story we concocted was gathering momentum. We have a new enemy. But when the truth is this incredible, if the world were to see this, it would destroy all we gained in a few hours. hours. Could it be buried forever? Saturday at 9 o'clock on Fox 40. You've tried painting, you've tried caulking, and it just doesn't work. And with the patented all-dry basement system, we don't have to dig up your lawn or jackhammer your basement floor. And in most cases, all-dry can fix your basement in just one day. And we offer a lifetime guarantee on our work. Nobody beats all-dry. Do you have mold, mildew, or musty smells? All-dry can take care of those problems, too. Pick up the phone and call who? Call all-dry today. Turn up the mother of all Fox Sundays with a blue hair love affair on Futurama. A website scandal on King of the Hill. PeggySleep.com. It's March Gone Mad on The Simpsons. I'm not insane. Run, Mars, pump those crazy legs. And Mother's Day Gone Bad on Malcolm. Boys! Plus, Mulder gets a wish he may regret on The X Files. It's the mother of all Fox Sundays, and it's all new starting at 7 6 Central. Fox Monday is a night of fantastic fights. First, it's boyfriend versus girlfriend's dad in a battling new that 70s show. I mean, what father would like the guy who's nailing his daughter? Then, it's son against father in a tightest fight with sobriety. I want you to admit that you have a nut drinking problem. And in our main event, it's Nell versus everyone. I'm a bad witch. When war is declared on Allie McBeal. I want to get her. The all-new action starts at 8, 7 Central, Fox Monday. Whether they're a threat to others I thought you might have a gun. or a threat to themselves, it's an officer's job oh, yeah. uh, to bring them in Come back. alive. The war against interstate drug smuggling takes more than fast cars. The best weapons an officer has against drug runners is his training and quick thinking. Millageville, Georgia. Two officers pull over a car for speedy. 
but when they approach the two men in the car, the officers can tell this won't be a simple traffic stop. The police could take the men into custody right now, but instead, they pretend they didn't notice anything. All right, let me get you out there, my boy, dog, and you go okay? The driver never suspects what's really going on. We'll get you a warning and get you on your way. The officers are just playing it cool. Where are you headed to? To keep the suspects from getting nervous. Where are y'all coming from? When the partners get together, it turns out the suspects have different stories. That's not what I got. That means someone is lying. Is okay? But the officers stay friendly, even during a routine pat down of the driver. Next, they get the passenger out of the car. I need you to turn around real quick. Uh, Mr. Samuel, you got some type of legal drugs in your front crotch there. It's a tense moment. 